Dirtle Magic. Thank you for tuning in to Dirtle Magic. Please subscribe and hit that notification bell if you like the content you see here today, and leave a like and share the video with someone you might think is interested. Leaving those likes really helps us out, but another way to help us out is by using our TCG Player affiliate link below. If you're looking for singles, sealed product, or gaming accessories, please consider using our link to support the channel. We also have some playmats at inkgaming.com. Go ahead and hit the link in the description to check those out. Alright, let's grab some spells and dirtle with some magic. Hello and welcome back to Draw Magic. Today we're playing some Obeka Brute Chronologist. Looking at our opening hand... Uh, if we had one more land, this hand would be fantastic. I would keep it and see what happens with it, but... Oh, can't do that. Alright, let's go ahead and mulligan. New hand! We have lands, feed the swarm, we have a clone thingy and some lightning greaves. Hey, I think we can keep this. Our commander, one blue, black, red for legendary 3 4 ogre wizard. Tap the players whose turn it is may end the turn. I, in testing, already got to have one of my dreams fulfilled about punching Eldrazi trigger in the face for reshuffling the uh, graveyard into the deck, so I'm already happy with it. Our first competitor with the Kestia Triumph into play is Ravos Dragon Engine 6 for a legendary 4 4 artifact creature dragon. Following, whenever you cast a spell, put 1 1 count on Ramos Dragon Engine for each of that spell's colors. Remove 5 1 1 counts from Ramos. Add white, white, blue, blue, black, black, red, red, green, green to your mana pool. Activate this ability only once each turn. Comes to our turn, we get Sulfur Falls. Uh, we have check lands, but not a lot to check. Let's get down the bog for now and pass it off. We'll pick our opponent across the way. Still don't know who they are yet. Our next opponent, however, Verena Lich Queen. One white, blue, black for legendary 4 4 zombie wizard. Whenever you attack with one more zombies, draw that many cards and then discard that many cards, you gain that much life. Two, exile two cards from your graveyard. Create a tapped 2 2 black zombie creature token. And our last competitor, Hana Ships Navigator. One white, blue for legendary 1 2 human artificer. One white, blue, tap, return target artifact or enchantment card from your graveyard to your hand. Sunken Hall into play for Verena on their turn. Hana's turn, Myriad Landscape into play. Over to Ramos' turn. So, our milling and wheel effects are probably not going to be very good, at least against two of our opponents, spe uh, specifically, rather, Verena. I actually just tested the deck against one of those, and it did not work out well. Already made some changes to the deck, so we'll see if we can do better. Mountain to play for Ramos rolls over to us. We get a Blood Crypt. Um, sure. Let's put it into play tapped. And pass it to our opponents. Over to Verena. What is this? McCundy Messes. McKindy Messes? There's the battlefield tap. Adds white. Otherwise, the other side is creatures you control get 2 2 till end of turn. Hana's turn with a Plains into play. Mindstone coming down for them. Over to Ramos's turn. No land dropped into play, though. They do have to go to cleanup. Let's see what they discard. Regrowth. Comes to our turn. We got Sphinx's tutelage. Nice sum of our mill coming down. Let's see. Let's go ahead, play Sulphur Falls, and get that down. And we'll pass it off. So this is two blue enchantment. Whenever you draw a card, target opponent mills two cards. If two non-line cards that share a color, this way we're milled. Repeat this process. Diagraph Captain coming down for Verena after a land. Swamp specifically. Over to Hana Ships Navigator. So land and or crack the Myriad Landscape. That's the play I'm seeing. It's a land Maze of Ith. Married Landscape gets the crack. Uh, let's see. Double Island, probably. Double Island into play for Hana. Probably gonna pass it off. Over to Ramos. Ramos, again, no land into play. What will they discard? Grip of Chaos. Okay. That's not fun. Sphinx's Tillage will trigger. Uh, should we hit Ramos and help them get to the land? Will they see it that way? I don't know. Because I don't want to fuel the other effects, so we'll select Ramos. We get Underworld Breach for the draw, though. Alright, Maelstrom Nexus. Alright. Uh, Planes, what is this? Inspired Ultimatum. Alright, and Ignite Memories. So we did mill him for four. 
Let's go ahead and play at Drowned Catacombs and get down our commander. Obeka Brute Chronologist coming down. So she's leading the deck basically because if things go awry and or of course the punch Eldrazi triggers in the face. Also, if we have some end of turn effects through reanimation, she stops them. Except for Felden, that does not work. It only works for one more turn. Over to Verena, seven cards in hand after the draw. Diagraph Captain will help them bleed their opponents dry, although it's only target opponents, so it's not that fast, but it does have Death Touch and it is a Zombie Lord. Zombies can come out very quickly. It has me a little bit concerned. Verena Lich Queen down to the battlefield after a land drop. Diagraph on the attack. Verena will trigger. So draw one, discard one, gain one life. Let's see where the attacker is going after the stack resolved. They discard an island. Diagraph off into us. We'll take the two. Over to Hana. Might mill them the next turn. See if we can't get some help dealing with Verena. Like I said before, I did just face this in my last testing video. This deck can get out of hand real quick. I don't know if it's the same player or not, but I'm not willing to take the chance. Crucible of Worlds coming down for Hana. Mana Vault coming down. That's a lot of mana. Over to Ramos. I hope they drop a land this time. Second main phase for Ramos. Is it land search? Is it something? Nope, they pass it. They tap it down and pass. Damn. I feel bad for him. And they discard Mystical Teachings. Uh, okay. It's a tutor. Sphinx's tutelage will trigger. Let's hit Hana this time. Consecrate. Is that Consecrated Sphinx? Yeah, that could stay there. Okay, and an island. We get Luxury Suite. Got a lot of lands last game, too. Don't know what that's about. Let's go ahead and play Luxury Suite. Let's play some Lightning Greaves. And let's go ahead and equip to Obeka. And then let's get down Phantasmal Image with the Death Touch, copying the Diagraph Captain. I think that will be good. All right, now we have a good blocker. Let's pass it off. Over to Verena's turn, Underground River into play. Six cards in hand after the land play. Let's see what they do with the turn. Verena on the attack along with Diagraph Captain. All right, they'll trigger. She does count as a zombie because she is one. So they'll draw two, discard two, and gain two life. Ooh, Maze of Ith is being activated against Verena, so I imagine they're going into Hana. They still get to draw the two cards off the Lich Queen's ability, so still get to discard two and gain two life. There's a Mind Crank and a Vizier of the Many. Nice. I approve. I have those both in our deck. And the Diagraph is also going into Hana like we thought, so Hana will take two. Corpse Knight coming down. Oh no, that's a good combo piece in my Blink deck and Paper. Don't like seeing that around. Cemetery Reaper also coming down. Zombies they control get 1-1. Corpse Knight will trigger, we each lose a life. We are down to 37, Hana 37, Ramos 39. Two Hana's turn, Mana Vault will trigger. So Cemetery Reaper also has the ability to black tap, exile target creature from a graveyard, create a zombie. And it doesn't have to be from their graveyard. So we have a lot of tech going against us as far as wheels and mill are concerned. Search for Escanta coming down for Hana. Norn's Annex also coming down for Hana. Yeah, once I saw the Maze of Ith, I figured it was going to be kind of a pillow fort thing. White and blue really good at that. So Verena can still mostly get through. We cannot necessarily because we don't have white. We'd have to pay the two life. So Verena's probably going to start coming after us a bit. And they're getting down a lot of zombies. Phyrexian Metamorph coming down. Let's see what they're going to copy. They copy Norn's Annex, making it even harder to attack Hana. Over to Ramos' turn. Forced into play. Yes. Comes our turn. We get Ancient Excavation. Yeah, we need kind of a new hand right there. Let's go ahead and hit Hana again with Sphinx's Tutelage. Maybe get them some enchantments into the graveyard. Rodequoi Tower in the Plains. Okay, gone past the land block at least. Let's play Dragon Skull Summit, and then we'll do Ancient Excavation. Alright, we got Dance of the Dead, Thassa's Oracle, and Gear Reach Sanitarium. Uh, don't know about that. We do have a bunch of triggers from Tutelage, though. Let's get rid of a Swamp. No, let's get rid of Gear Reach, because that's probably not going to help anyone at all. 
Uh, besides, maybe Ramos. Underworld Breach and Feed the Swarm. I don't want to put Thassa's Oracle into the graveyard in case somebody else can reanimate it. We have triggers. Let's send one to each opponent. There we go. Let's see what gets milled. So we have Talisman of Dominance, Land Tax, Mirror Maid, Wafer's Bauble, Natural Reclamation Cascade, okay, and Spellweaver of the Loot. Interesting. I think we'll go and reanimate a Consecrated Sphinx because we need more card draw. Oh, we have something coming out of Ramos. I hope it's not something to get rid of us. Oh, Sprouting Vines, nice. So this is a land search ability, or card rather, that has Storm. I also like to use it in stuff like Rash Me. Okay, they get a Plains Island and Swamp for Ramos. Let's dance with the dead. Consecrated Sphinx to our side. We'll be really good for Sphinx's tutelage. There it is. Let's go ahead and pass it off. To Verena's turn. Going to be interesting. Oh, we have something on the upkeep already. Hangar Mong, this spell costs one as the cast if Emma controls no basic lands, destroy target creature. That was short lived. Consecrated Sphinx goes to the graveyard. Verena on the attack. All of it off into Ramos, looks like. I'll have to double check in a second. Verena will trigger. Four cards to draw, four cards to discard, and four life. Alright, so they discard Valor. Oh no. Riptide Laboratory. Altar of Dementia and Anacar Waste. So Valor is an old, in old incarnation, rather. As long as it's in your graveyard and you control a planes, creatures you control have first strike. They do not currently control a planes, thankfully. Maze of Ith being activated against Verena. Alright, let's see where everything else is going. Ramos, Ramos, and Ramos for all the others. Damage is good against Ramos. They are down to 29. Over to Hanna's turn. Search for his Kanto will trigger, so will Mana Vault. They put Mesa Enchanters from the top of the library into the graveyard, thanks to the search for as Kanto. They choose not to untap Mana Vault. Hana ships Navigator coming down for that player. Nice. Let's see what they can get back. Looks like Wayfarer's Bauble Mirror Maid would be good for him. <laughs> so it copies enchantments or artifacts. So another Norn's Annex if they want. Over to Ramos' turn. We know they have lands this time, so fantastic. Hopefully they can help us deal with Verena because apparently this deck needs a lot more card draw even though we have a number of wheel effects. Just aren't getting them yet. Ramos tapping down their mana and passing it off. That's unfortunate. To the cleanup, they will have to discard two cards. Let's see what they do. They discard Brilliant Ultimatum and Hunting Pack. Okay. Let's go ahead and use the trigger on Hana. See if we can get them anything nifty. Let's see. We get Austere Command. Uh, that's too bad. Elspeth Conquers Death, Lightning Greaves, and Propaganda. So, some good things to get back. Our turn gives us Combustible Gearhulk. Well, that's nice. So, I do want to play the Gearhulk. But I also don't necessarily want to target the Ramos player because they've getting, been getting a beating and... Uh, but we need the card draw pretty badly, so I guess I'm going to have to. Combustible Gear Hulk, let's do it. We'll target Ramos. Not something I want to do, but it is something I need to do. Alright, they, uh, they let us just mill it. They take 5 damage, otherwise it was 2 lands. So at least we didn't lose too much and got them out of the way. Let's go ahead and pass the turn. Combustible Gear Hulk will make a great blocker. End of turn, we have a response Alvarina looks like. What are they doing? They're exiling two cards to make another zombie. Corpse Knight will trigger. We each lose a life. Over to Verena's turn proper. Four cards in hand after the draw. Let's see what they do. Zombie, or they're getting a little a little too many zombies. Let's, let's put it that way. Uh, I do not run Cyclonic Rift in this deck. I am starting to cut those cards trying to find something that's a bit cheaper. Probably going to go with River's Rebuke over Evacuation just because Evac gets all the creatures back to their owner's hands and I want to steal those. So it wouldn't work out too well. Verena on the attack. Let's see where everything's going. They're trying to take out Ramos before I can get going. Okay. Hopefully Hana helps out a little bit with the maze. Uh, there's nothing we can do. Alright, helping out with the commander damage. Very nice of Hana. All right, so they will do the uh, draw card discard thing over on Verena's side. Let's see what happens. What did they discard? Jason's Archivist, Vengeful Dead, 
Umbrial Rites and Demir Signet. That's one thing I miss about this deck over your tillers, there's no white for stuff like Unburial Rites and Sun Titan. Damage is good. Ramos down to 12. Gonna have to find a way to keep them in the game. I playing Grixis. I just don't know if we have it. End of Arena's turn. We have an activation for Married Landscape from Hana. They'll go get some more lands. Two planes into play for Hana. Going to roll over to their turn proper. Two Hana's turn proper. All through the triggers, they are down to 30. Mana Vault being not untapped again. Planes into play. The Dalkin Ori coming down for the Hana player. I don't know if I said that right. That's it for Hana. Over to Ravos. Drop a land. Hopefully play something that can help save them. Um, board wipe would be good. I uh, kind of hope we get one ourselves, although the only real one we have in the deck right now is Blasphemous Act. I definitely need to put some more in. We do have things like Echoing Truth, which I'm trying instead of Cyclonic Rift, and Sever the Bloodline. I don't think these are going to do it this time around. Firewild Border Post coming down. They are bouncing a land and paying one instead. Okay, that's interesting. So these are a bit older. Land didn't play for Ramos, by the way. Let's see what they're doing first, then we'll go over it. All right, they're not doing anything. So for the border post cycle, they're all allied colors. This one is one red-green. You can pay one and return a basic land you control to its owner's hand rather than pay its mana cost, it enters the battlefield tap, and it taps for red or green. The allied colors all tap for the same allied colors that they are. We get Golgari Thug. That could be good. No creatures in the graveyard, though. I just checked. The deck does have 27 creatures. So I don't know what's going on quite with that. Milhana again. Let's see what we did. Terminal Expanse and Mystic Gate. Okay, so they can just play some more lands out of the graveyard. Let's play Golgari Thug. And then we'll play Thassa's Oracle just to have an extra blocker. Might get a groan out of people, but I do not run a combo for it in this deck. I do mill, so maybe it can win me the game, but it I have no demon consultation or anything. Hana is being activated in response. Let's see what they're going to get. They're going to get back Propaganda. Yeah, that's a good card. They are also casting Propaganda. So attacking them cost four life and two for us, specifically because we have no white mana. Thass into play, it'll trigger. We get a look at the top X cards where X's are uh, devotion to blue. Ooh, fell down the third path. Dex duplicate, Ractus signet, Pondrify. Pondrify might come in handy too. So I'm thinking here, since we only get to keep one, we'll do Dax duplicate. And the rest go on bottom in a random order. Dax Duplicant comes into play, gives us another combustible gear hulk, hopefully, and we can go from there. Let's pass the turn. End step, we have an activation. Are they going to make some more zombies? Nope, they're exiling a card. What is it? Consecrated Sphinx Gang exiled. That's a good target. New zombie for Verena, Corpse Knight will trigger. We're down to 35, Hana down to 29, and Ramos down to 11. Verena's going to make a new zombie. Corpse Knight will trigger again. Well, we're down to 34. Hana to 28. Ramos, unfortunately, down to 10. They didn't even get to really play this game. I kind of feel terrible. I wish we could help. Verena on the attack again. Let's see how much of it is going into Ramos. Just about all of it, except for they pulled back the Cemetery Reaper. Verena will trigger. Verena up to 54. They discard, oh no, Filth. That stinks. So if they control a swamp and we have swamps, their creatures have Swamp Walk. Another one of the incarnations. Soul of New Phyrexia is also in the graveyard. And the graveyard keeps closing on me. Pain in my butt. Snow-covered lands. Reliquary Tower. And... Withered Wretch. For more graveyard removal. Damage is good against Ramos. Negative 15. Sorry that they didn't get to play anything, barely. It just... Didn't work out. I don't know what hand they kept and they didn't say anything, so I hope you get a better game in next time, Ramos player. That sucked. Okay, so reevaluating. Verena is still probably the biggest threat. I do have damage I can throw over Hana's face. Oh god, Field of the Dead. That's going to be a pain in the butt. The new zombie, Corpse Knight, will trigger. As I was saying, though, Hana, I have two creatures that can throw damage over to Hana, so we don't necessarily have to attack them. Verena, however, has a very large board state and we need to get it under control. And like I said, the only removal we have is Blasphemous Act at the moment. Need to fix that, apparently. Very much so. And, 
Yeah, it's going to be uphill battle. TikTok Edge destroying the Field of the Dead. Into play, out of play. Field of the Dead is the um, dead. That's fantastic. Comes our turn, we draw Dax Duplicant. Swings his two eligible trigger. I'm going to give it to Hana again. I don't really want to keep milling them, but they can also recur all of their stuff, so that's nice. Let's go ahead and play Dax Duplicant. No way we're going to be able to block this next turn anyway. What will come into play as a copy of? Combustible Gearhulk. It has first strikes. So that's nice. And then we'll pick Hana. Again, I don't want to, but I need to. Hopefully they'll just give us the cards. All right. Hey, we got some good hits too. River Kelpie could be very good for some card draw. Uh, let's hit two of them on Verena just because I feel bad. It's probably not the best choice though. Last one to Hana. All right, let's play a command tower. Nothing else to do though. And let's go to combat. Both combustible gear hulks off into the Verena player. They have first strike, they should be fine. We can't block their creatures anyway, so let's go ahead and do it. Dethrone on the deck, duplicate one will trigger, making it larger. Hana being activated in response. Let's see what they're going to get back. It's a moat. Creatures without flying can't attack. Oh, just straight up. Nice. Are they going to play it before we deal damage though? They are going to play it before we deal damage. Dang. That sucks. Also, they're running the Incarnations in Verena. Wonder is one of them. If they get into the graveyard, their guys have flying. Plus, there's some flying lords for zombies now, I believe, from War of the Spark. All right, so the damage was good, at least. Verena down to 41. Let's pass the turn. End of turn. Verena doing some stuff. Let's see. Looks like they're going to exile a creature. They are. Where is it? It's going to be the Mesa Enchantress from Hana's graveyard. Corpse Knight will trigger. More activations. New zombie into play. We lose a life. Corpse Knight again. Going down to 31. I imagine we'll also be going down to 30. There it is. Another zombie fresh from the grave going to come into play. We'll lose another life. So Verena does have reach over the attacks just like we will if we get, uh, what is it? Flare of the Hate Bound and we're down to 30. Hana down to 23. So Verena does have some reach around with the Corpse Knight. If we can get rid of it, we'll be better off. Galdo's Shrine into play. Their creatures now have first strike because Valor is in the graveyard up towards the top. Soul Ring coming down for Verena. Diviner's Wand. Okay. So that will give flying when they draw a card. That's unfortunate. It's also an equipment for wizards, and she is a zombie wizard. Hana's turn. Island into play. I think next turn we get down the river kelpie and kind of hope for the best depending on what we draw we're not getting any creatures in the graveyard to reanimate we're also not getting any reanimate spells so i guess that's a good thing we get mind crank hmm is that something we can use we do have to mill let's go ahead and hit hana let's see what we milled feldar retreat and planes okay rather god's also in there too so, Mind Crank, what do we want to do with that? We can't attack anywhere and we can't throw damage yet, so I think River Kelpie and sit on the rest of our hand. River Kelpie to the stack. And we'll just have to pass it off for now. No attacks. End of turn, Verena Lich Queen will be activated. Another zombie. Corpse Knight, there it goes. Another activation. More of the undead abominations. We have a response of Hana. What are they doing? Activating Hana, I wager. No, they're activating Azkanta, the Sunken Ruin. They look at the top of the library, reveal a creature on land card from among them, put it into their hand. All right, so board wipe, hopefully. It is Sensei's Divining Top. That could be really good, but if we mill it away from them, that won't be very good. Corpse Knight again. We're going down to 28. Hana going down to 20. There goes another zombie. They still have a lot of cards in the graveyard, too. They are keeping all of the creatures, though, I've noticed. Of course they would. If they're reanimating, why not? Corpse Knight again. We're going down to 27. Hana down to 19. Two Verena's turn proper. They could just make a bunch of zombies. They still wouldn't necessarily kill us, though. Two cards in hand after the draw. 
Vizier of many faces getting involved. What are they going to copy? Could potentially be Thassa's Oracle. They're doing a Diagraph, Captain. All right. Since his Divine Top being cast by Hana at instant speed comes into play. End of Arena's turn. We have a Hana activation. Let's see what they're getting back. It is... Elspeth Conquers Death. All right, that works for me. Mirage Mirror also coming into play. Interesting. Hana's Upkeep, they're activating Sensei's Divine Top to look at the top three cards. Over to Hana's turn proper. Six cards in hand after the draw, still doing pretty well. Varina's down to two and we are down to two. Keeping ours back for... Oh, hey, we get a land out of the graveyard on Hana. River Kelp will trigger, we get to draw a card. I didn't actually think that might even pay dividends, but here we are. We get Demir Signet, that's unfortunate. Let's go ahead and mill Hana for a bit. Let's see what we milled. Lands and Luminarch Ascension. Nice, although they can get back the Ascension pretty easily, especially with Moten play. We get Izzet Signet. Let's go ahead and mill Hana some more. I think at this point we'll activate Sphinx's Tulips to discard and draw a card. Activation, we will draw a card. We draw a mountain, that's not terribly helpful. We'll mill Hana again. Mill to Hana, discard the Demir Signet. Mountain into play. At least it gets a land out of the way, and let's go ahead and play in as that Signet. Pass the turn, nothing to attack, can't do it. There's a moat in the way. End of turn, Verena doing the zombie making. We're down to 25, Hana down to 16. They're making another zombie or exiling something from a graveyard. Not sure, three mana floating, and their lord here at the Cemetery Reaper can exile stuff from graveyards. Nope, just making another zombie. We have a response coming out of Hana, it's Elspeth Conquers Death. Comes into play, exile target permanent and opponent controls with converted mana cost three or greater. Where's it going? Over to Verena, that's nice. It gets exiled to the command zone. Corpse Knight triggers again. Verena's turn proper, three cards in hand after the draw. I imagine recast their commander perhaps. Oh, is that a Drown Yard? Drown Yard Temple, return it from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. That'll work out for us if they want to redo it. Get some more card draw. Verena Lich Queen coming back down for that player. Oh, mana drain out of Hana. Nice. That's it for Farina. Over to Hana at the end step. They are activating Ascanta. Let's see what they reveal this time. It's an unwinding clock. Okay, so that's not terrible. They have, what, Mindstone? And the Mana Vault? That'll be worse. But as long as they don't necessarily play a Psychrift, we're okay. Although, it looks like this deck for Hana probably has one. Hopefully, we can get rid of it with some mill and get lucky. Ooh, Narset Parter of Veils. That's just rude. Really don't like that card. Upkeep, though, for Hana on their actual turn. Sensei's Divine Top is being activated. First main phase, we have some triggers. Non-creature spells our opponents cast. Well, non-creature spells Hana's opponents cast. Cost two more to cast until the next turn. Uh, we have a lot of creatures. Probably aren't going to cast anything. And Mana Drain will give them four generic mana. Unwinding Clock coming down with that free mana. Nicely played. Burnished Heart also coming down. Landed to play from the graveyard for Hana, we get to draw a card. Animate dead, finally something nifty. Let's go ahead and mill Hana for some more. Comes our turn, we get Sepulchral Primordial. Nice, unfortunately, uh, I was just checking our opponent's graveyards. They're not the best. Not for pilfering anyway. Let's go ahead and activate the Sphinx's tutelage again. We have a response out of Hana, they're activating Hana itself, or herself rather. They're getting back the Gilded Lotus. They're also casting the Gilded Lotus. They activate the Gilded Lotus and sacrifice the Burnished Heart. We get Sever the Bloodline. Oh, that could be really, really good, but it does have flashback, so we let's go ahead and discard it. It'll help us deal with the zombies later. We'll go ahead and mill Hana for some more. We mill Treachery and Command Tower. Yeah, we can live without Treachery. However, that's probably coming back. Let's go ahead and pass the turn. End of the turn, we have a response out of Arena. They're getting rid of the Burnished Heart from the graveyard to make another zombie token. That means Corpse Knight will trigger. 
Two Varina's turn proper. They do still have the wand at their disposal, but it looks like they're resummoning their commander. Undo Inversion, destroy all non-lane permanents. Well, that's unfortunate. Although we do get some nice reanimation targets now. We have a response out of Hana, as Kanta, the Sunken Ruin. They reveal Sigil of the Empty Throne. That will be good for him. A lot of flying angels. Plus, it gets around Moat. Sensei's Divine Top being activated. They're going to look at the top three and put it back in any order. Maybe Sigil of the Empty Throne is not something they want. Sensei's Divining Top being activated to draw a card and putting it on top of the deck. Hana sacrificing the Mind Stone to draw a card. All of the things die. Our commander back to the command zone. Diagraph Captain for Verena will trigger a number of times. Let's see who they're going to take out. It looks like we'd be able to die as well, but they can't kill both of us. So this is uh, tense and interesting. Hana player was saying they were just one mana away from doing an overload Psych Rift. That's unfortunate. Okay, there's the Diagraph Captain triggers stacked out. Hana player is actually going to die. That's unfortunate for us. But we're going to live with six life, I think. Golgari Thug will trigger. We'll put Combustible Gearhulk on the top. River Kelpie's going to come back because as Persist, we'll get to draw a card. We get Magus of the Wheel. That could be really good. Conversely, it could also be really bad, so I don't think we're going to be using that. We are down to six. Hana down to zero. Good game to Hana, though. They were uh, That moat really saved our butt for a long time. Coming down to our turn, we're going ahead and not dredge. Draw the Combustible Gear Hulk, and let's go play it. They have us mill. Let's see what we got. Echoing Truth, Tevri's Toolage, and Island. Okay, now that would have been too terribly helpful anyway, except maybe the Echoing Truth later. Let's go to attacks. Attack with the River Kelpie. Two damage is good. Verena down to 32 after the combat damage and the damage from Combustible Gear Hulk. Let's get down Arumi of the Dead Tide. And pass the turn. Verena's turn proper. Three cards in hand after the draw. Probably going to resummon the commander. Oh no, it's God Eternal Oketra. Very nice. Face this the last game too. Things a powerhouse. And Whip of Erebos. Oh, that's not good. We don't need any life gain here. We will go ahead and use the replacement effect this time. We mill Massacre Girl Evil Twin into the graveyard, plus two swamps. Let's activate a Rumi. Get Evil Twin. And cast said Evil Twin. It'll come to play as Combustible Gear Hulk, because why not? Then we'll choose our opponent. Let's see if they want to take damage or let's draw cards. They milled us. Let's see. Terror of the Peaks is going to be pretty good. Uh, do we want to get that back right now, though? Probably. Let's go ahead and play Anime Dead. Terror of the Peaks in the plate. River Kelpie will trigger. We get Rapid Hybridization. Nice. Let's go ahead and play Golgari Thug. We'll do a 1 damage to our opponent, thanks to the Terror of the Peaks trigger. And then let's kill God Eternal of Ketra. Two attacks. Both Gear Hulks, let's go. Damage is good. Our opponent, Verena, is down to 12. Let's pass it off. Evil Twin Combustible Gear Hulk is going to get sacrificed. Two Verenas turn two cards in hand at the moment. Let's see what they're going to do with it. Talaria West for the Transmute. Oh, I don't like that. So it's transmuting for zero. They do have to reveal, though. They get Bajuka Bog. That's too bad. But you can bog into play. There goes our graveyard. It happens. Our beautiful graveyard. My repository for wonders and death. Whip of Erebus is bringing something to theirs back. Looks like a bone miser. It is. River Kelpie will draw us a card. We get Sir Conrad the Grim. Oop. Straight up attack. Oh, we can't block. They have Swamp Walk. No! Good game to our punt. Good game indeed. There it is, native one, victory to Verena. Dang, thought we had him there for a minute. Uh, played a pretty tight game, I'm gonna give it to him. Unfortunately, we just couldn't get any of our graveyard removal. We have Rakdos Charm, we have Bajuka Bog, and I think we have one other thing in the deck, but I'll have to go back and look and we'll take a look at that in a minute. Okay, there it is, three votes to the victor. 
One vote to us, one vote to Hana. Zero votes to Ramos, unfortunately. Let's go ahead and take a look at Obeka. Okay, here's the deck. So what I wanted to go for was kind of like a wheeling, milling, reanimating strategy. We also have a lot of clone effects in the deck. Uh, probably could use a body double. I hadn't really thought of that beforehand. So what Obeka does for the deck is to get rid of those temporary triggers from things like felled in, but that only lasts for like till the next the next end step. And then we also have things that uh, Underworld Breach we can keep around. We also have other effects that we can just stop, like those Eldragosy triggers if we're trying to mill somebody. And of course, Arumi of the Dead Tide, we can just keep our creatures around as well. So it looks like the deck definitely needs some more card draw and definitely some more mass removal, because we just weren't really getting anything. Probably maybe up the creature count. Currently we have 27. Probably need it to be higher, especially if we can get some like mana dorks that do mana. I know there's a few milling mana dorks in blue. Don't know if I want to run them just yet, but I'll go check it out. Just to cover the milling so far, we have Altar of the Brood. This can be good if we can get something going. Again, whites are a lot better at reanimation to have those things kind of rotate in and out, but I think this will be good enough. Then we have Dusk Mantle Guild Mage, and of course you saw Mind Crank in the deck. If we can get that going, it can win this game, unless there's an Eldrazi trigger. At that point, we activate Obeka, keep that graveyard down, but they don't immediately die. So then everybody, you know, has a turn to obliterate us, but I think that's kind of fair, you know what I'm saying? We also have Altar of Dementia. That way we can sacrifice the creatures into the graveyard, get them back with some reanimation, and just kind of repeat the process. Again, white is a lot better at doing this, so I'm going to need to find something maybe in black that helps us get our stuff back easier. I don't want to use Shieldred, the Whispering one. I mean, yes, it's a great card, but I don't I don't want to. It, everybody uses Shieldred. We also have Court of Cunning in the deck. That one hasn't come up yet, and I don't know if I want to keep it, but we'll see how it goes. And then at the top end, we have cards like Traumatize. I don't know that I want to keep this in the deck. It's very, eh, like a one-time shot kind of thing. Again, probably going to replace it with a creature that maybe does some milling. Then we have Garuda, which is fantastic as long as you have enough clones. And we do have a lot of clones in the deck, but probably not enough to really support Garuda. It's more about stealing our opponent's stuff most of the time, unless we can get a clone. Then it's okay and it's nice and whatever, but it's great in the deck. And then we have Fleet Swallower at the top. No evasion, 6-6, six, six, and can mill anybody no matter who we attack. And that's kind of why that's in there. Again, don't know if it's something I'm going to keep. Saz deck, as long as it hits somebody, can mill them and he gets larger. Which can be a threat over time too, because he just keeps hitting people and milling them. Uh, he does flying and that's really the only major reason. This one does mill half the library though and it kind of combos with Traumatize. But you can let me know what you think in the comments if you have any suggestions. Mill is not a strategy I usually employ. So it'd be nice to have some suggestions there. But here's the deck so far. Definitely need more card draw, definitely need more mass removal. So we're going to work on that. Anyway, if you saw any cards you want to buy for yourself, you go on pre-order some sealed product or order some sealed product or want to some card sleeves to protect all that stuff, please consider using the TCG player affiliate link in the description below. It doesn't cost you anything extra and it helps support the channel. Okay, until the next game for Obeka, I'll see you then.